No chance, so that's what you got. No chance! Here we are, King of the Ring 99, taking place on the 27th of June in Greensboro, North Carolina. 20,000 are in attendance, an estimated 430,000 have bought the show on pay-per-view, which more than doubles WCW's Great American Bash, and tonight we're gonna see a WWF title match pitting champion The Undertaker against The Rock. We also have the winner takes all two on one ladder match between Stone Cold Steve Austin and the McMahons, and of course we'll also find out who becomes the 1999 King of the Ring. A few notes from Sunday Night Heat though before we get started. Commissioner Michaels ordered Vince McMahon to face Ken Shamrock one on one before the pay-per-view began, though it was Shane who ended up taking his dad's place, HBK fully accepted this. Shane took a clothesline, a leg lariat and a hurricane rana, but then Steve Blackman showed up and the WWF's latest heel attacked Shamrock once again with his kendo stick. Shamrock was spitting up blood in the backstage area after the match, showing us all the power of the motherfuck ladies and gents. Steve then left the arena, he's travelling to WCW to put an end to Kurt Hennig and the West Texas Rednecks. Shamrock's taking part in the King of the Ring tournament tonight, but it looks like his quarterfinal opponent Billy Gunn's gonna have a free ride into the semis. China and Triple H attack Road Dogg on heat also, China and the D.O.Double-G are facing each other in another quarterfinal match tonight, X-Pac ran down for the save, and depending on how the King of the Ring tournament goes later, Waltman could very well face his buddy Road Dogg in the semi-finals. When the show begins, Michael Cole announces that Shane might not be able to compete in tonight's ladder match, and Michael hopes to get a word with Mr. McMahon a little later on. We have a King of the Ring quarterfinal match to start us off, X-Pog vs Hardcore Holly. Holly got a car dropped on his head on Raw this past week so great to see he's not dead. Pac goes for the standing bronco buster early on and Bob Holly has it scouted, color me surprised. Pac makes up for it with a diving crossbody but Holly makes him pay with a powerbomb. You can tell they're rushing through the match here. X-Pac performs a back suplex, Bombastic Bob takes a few kicks in the corner before falling in place for the Bronco Buster. X-Pac hits his signature move and so Bob Holly goes out to grab a steel chair. Clearly having Waltman's crotch in his face was just too much. Pac takes a shot right to the head, Kyoto calls for the bell as Holly delivers a neckbreaker. Road dog Jesse James runs down for the save and it looks like that neckbreaker's re-aggravated an old injury as Pac struggles to his feet. Still, X-Pac's made it to the semi-finals, here's a look at our updated bracket and, gonna be honest, when watching this live I thought China was gonna win. Hardcore Holly tells the Red Rooster that he's the big shot, everyone plays by Hardcore Holly's rules, and Holly also hasn't forgotten about the big show. You must be doing a tremendous job if Terry Taylor thinks you're an asshole. Next we've got Kane vs Big Show, the big boys of the 1999 King of the Ring tournament. The stare down at the start of the match was brilliant but keep your expectations in check here, we're getting through these quarterfinal matches at lightning speed. Big Show displays insane strength by throwing Kane all around the ring, the big red machine's getting a taste of his own medicine. Show misses a stinger splash but he still manages to throw Kane away while defending some offense in the corner, Kane takes a clothesline and he answers with an enziguri, you don't see Kane doing that too often. Often, and both men then go down after a double big boot. Kane recovers and we see the diving clothesline, a jawbreaker brings Show back into it but unfortunately the referee takes a bump and this allows Kane to hit a low blow, another uncharacteristic move from the devil's favourite demon. Hardcore Holly shows up looking to hit Big Show with a steel chair but he ends up taking a chokeslam from Kane and Terry Taylor laughed his ass off backstage. Kane then wraps his hand around the Big Show's neck, fans begin to boo when they notice Kane isn't going to chokeslam the big man and rather he's just going to choke him out. This goes on for an eternity and I think one of the guys may have missed their cue, but the crowd comes alive when Show frees himself. Kane then smacks Big Show with a steel chair, the referee wakes up to count the pin and Kane advances to the semi-finals. Kane wrestled like a heel here, I'm not sure if this is going to lead to anything but we are going to see the big red machine again very soon. Vince McMahon says his son needs to go to hospital but we can hear Shane saying he can still compete tonight. Vince is not going to let Shane wrestle Stone Cold though so god knows what this means for our main event. 
An injured Ken Shamrock's gonna face Billy Gunn next in our third quarterfinal match. Billy Gunn stole a tag team belt on Raw this past week, something that infuriated Bradshaw and Farouk. And the Acolytes even interrupted a Hardy Boys vs Edge and Christian tag team match on Heat just to send a warning to BA Billy Gunn. Bradshaw announced here that he's gonna face Billy tomorrow night on Raw. Gunn says Shamrock isn't hurt, he's just afraid of Billy, and no matter what happens, Billy's gonna, and I quote, go over the world's most dangerous horse's ass. Shamrock's freaking out backstage and attacking innocent people, but he still walks down to the ring for a fight, and Billy's gonna focus all his efforts on Ken's midsection here. All we know is that Ken's got internal injuries, and Billy equates internal injuries to anywhere below the neck and above the nuts. Ken fights back with a kick that floors BA, but Gunn replies with a backbreaker. A few kicks to the midsection keep Shamrock stunned, and while he does try an ankle lock, Billy escapes rather easily. Shamrock gets dropped on the barrier as the commentators wonder exactly what internal injuries Kenny Boy has. Another ankle lock attempt fails, and it looks like Ken has no hope at all here. He does manage to hit a jumping back elbow after Billy misses a top rope splash, but the referee calls for the bell when Gunn performs a sit down powerbomb. Billy wins via referee stoppage. JR says it's an unpopular decision, but it's the right decision. And now we have our last quarterfinal match to look at, it's China vs the Road Dog. China says when she was little she always wanted to be a princess, but now that she's grown up she wants to be queen. And when asked about the upcoming WWF title match tonight, Triple H kinda says he's not gonna offer The Undertaker any help. He says no one tells him what to do, and no one gives Hunter orders to carry out. So, Road Dog and China head down to the ring for their quarterfinal match. Triple H is going to watch this one from ringside. Road Dog hesitates a little when locking up with China in the corner, and the ninth wonder of the world ends up shoving Mr. Dog on his backside. It's almost like Road Dog isn't sure if he wants to wrestle this match. The two share hammer locks, and Road Dog takes a back elbow, and after more stalling, China finds herself in a headlock that she easily pars out of. Another hammer lock attempt gets answered with a forearm, and Hunter seems to be enjoying this one just as much as China. Road Dog misses a clothesline, he takes another forearm. At this point, China is making it look easy as she dominates Road Dog from one corner to another, but the roadie does manage to send China out of the ring with an Irish whip, and the crowd loves it. On the outside, Triple H comes to China's aid, and this leads to Road Dog taking a bump at the ring post and ring steps. Road Dog just can't afford to leave the ring because Hunter's gonna be right there waiting for him. More forearm shots from China back inside the ring get followed up with another back elbow and a few kicks to the midsection. The domination of Road Dog continues with a DDT, and Luke, the ultimate insult, the dancy knee. China hesitates a little after countering a slam, and you can hear Triple H tell her to lock in a sleeper. The move gets applied, and Double J starts to fade out. China tells a fan to fuck up as she applies more pressure, and Road Dog's able to get up and apply a sleeper of his own. It goes to the mat, and Hunter puts China's foot on the bottom rope. Hunter then whacks Road Dog with a chain he had wrapped around his fist. Road Dog kicks out of the follow up cover just as HBK begins walking down to the ring. We then see the Dante Punch, the Dante Leapfrog Body Guillotine, and the Dante Knee. And it's at this point Shawn Michaels pulls Triple H from the apron and he sends his old click buddy back to the locker room. Back in the ring, China delivers a low blow. Road Dog no sells it because our man was wearing a cup, and the DO Double G hits his signature pump handle slam. The pop roadie gets as incredible when he wins this match via pinfall. Not a great in ring wrestling match, but a very entertaining bout that the crowd definitely got into. Here's our updated brackets then. One of these individuals will become 1999 King of the Ring. Commissioner Michaels ordered the Hardy Boys vs Edge and Christian to take place again, seeing as the Acolytes interfered in the Sunday Night Heat match. The winner of this one becomes number one contenders for the tag team belts. The Hardys took the early lead, and even though Edge and Christian pulled off a double arm drag, Jeff Hardy answered with a head scissor takedown to Edge. A second attempt was countered with an Alabama slam. The Hardys pull off poetry in motion before Edge tags out. Christian has to try a few times to hit his fallen reverse DDT, but he gets there in the end. Eventually, Christian and Matt tag out, and Edge comes in with a lot of fire. Michael Hayes interferes when the referee gets distracted by Gangrel, but Edge manages to stay in the match. The crowd then comes alive when Edge spears Jeff out of another poetry in motion attempt, but this wasn't enough to win the match. Christian, though, keeps the crowd in it with a dive to the outside. Our match closes with Gangrel accidentally spitting his <coughs> red liquid in the Edge's face. This allows Jeff to get a pinfall win after a twist of fate, and does this mean we're looking at some problems within the brood? 
After talking it over, Edge and Gangrel do hug it out, but you know as well as I that this is going to be the start of the group breaking up. Michael Cole interviewed both The Rock and The Undertaker before our next match. The Rock spoke in tongues while saying he's gonna kick Taker's ass all over God's green earth, and The Undertaker wonders what happens when you rip the balls off a Brahma bull. Michael Cole was like, I don't fucking know, I've never tried it. Mr. McMahon then marches down to the ring and he announces that Shane will not be able to compete in tonight's main event. Therefore, the winner takes all ladder match is not going to take place. Shawn Michaels comes out, he says Vince isn't going to weasel his way out of this one, so Vince just changes his mind and he says he will compete and seeing as it was HBK who allowed a suitable replacement to take Vince's place earlier on on Heat, Vince says he'll have a suitable replacement for Shane McMahon in tonight's main event. The King of the Ring semi-finals are up next, first it's Billy Gunn vs Kane. This one gets around 5 minutes of ring time while the next match gets around 3 minutes. Billy lays in the right hands but he's quickly overpowered by his opponent. Gunn gets clotheslined before heading to the outside where Kane greets him with an uppercut. Kane then tries to use the ring steps to finish Billy off but BA dropkicks the steps into Kane's face and Gunn then lays in a ton of right hands. Billy continues to look good after a ring post bump and when it gets back in the ring Billy tries to wear his opponent down with a chancery. But when Billy goes for a famouser, Kane delivers a power slam. Kane then performs a sweet drop kick that sends Gunn to the outside, and our match ends when Billy grabs a chair, but the big show appears to take it away from him. Billy shoves the big man, Show swings the chair, but he hits Kane, and Billy wins via pinfall. So BA Billy Gunn's in the King of the Ring finals, and he has Big Show to thank for it. Backstage, X Pac says Road Dog's one of his best friends, but tonight's a big opportunity for both men. He wishes Road Dog good luck before saying, May the best man win. But Pac's also holding the back of his head, and it appears he isn't 100%. Road Dog has the same sentiments, he says X Pac is his friend but he wants to become King of the Ring, so the two make their entrances and we're gonna find out who faces Billy Gunn in the tournament final. We start with a back suplex from X Pac followed by a snapmare and a leg drop. X Pac then applies a deadly chin lock and this crowd sign is what happens if you find yourself in too many chin locks, be careful out there guys and use protection. We see the dancey punch and dancey knee, even though X Pac tried his best to counter it. X Pac stops a leapfrog body guillotine attempt, and we see a great looking spinning heel kick from Waltman. He then goes for the Bronco Buster, and he misses it. Road Dog says it's all over, he goes for the pump handled slam, but Kid counters it. X Pac performs the X Factor, and X Pac wins via pinfall. It's weird because short matches are usually really decisive, but not this time around. Gonna be honest, this King of the Ring hasn't been good so far. China vs Road Dog was alright, but the rest has been incredibly rushed. Billy Gunn vs X-Pac is our 1999 King of the Ring final, but before we see that, we're gonna watch the WWF title match. Not much of a build up to speak of here. The Undertaker interfered in a Triple H vs Rock cast match on Raw, and The Rock managed to get himself a championship opportunity after beating the Deadman and Triple H in a triple threat match. The Undertaker once again interfered in a Rock match this past week on Raw by tombstoning the number one contender, but Rock got a little revenge by putting Paul Bear on a giant Brahma Bull logo that The Rock brought to Raw with him. That same Brahma Bull logo was set on fire earlier on during Sunday Night Heat. So The Rock looks to become WWF Champion once again as both he and The Undertaker make their way down to the ring. This is the WWF title match at King of the Ring, the dead man vs the people's champ, Undertaker vs Rock. Our match begins with The Undertaker punching the back of Mike Kyoto's head, it's gonna be one of those matches isn't it? Taker lays in a few punches to The Rock but we then see a rock bottom and that should be it all over. Earl Hebner runs down to count the pinfall but Paul Bear pulls him out and Hebner gets decked by Studley Paul, starting this one off pretty hot folks. Undertaker delivers a choke slam. Kyoto wakes up, Rock kicks out a two and the crowd are now chanting The Rock's name. A clothesline puts the phenom down and another sends the champ out of the ring. The two then fight on the rampway and all the way back up to the entrance set and I don't know about this. The WWF have been relying on brawls around this area for championship matches quite a lot and it sometimes feels like a cheap way to extend match runtime. In saying that though, Rock does take a great looking bump at a guardrail. The Phenom suplexes Rock on the rampway as the two make their way back down to ringside, and when we get back in the ring, The Undertaker sinks his boot into Rocky's head before softening the Great One's arm up for old school. 
Taker begins walking the ropes, but he ends up getting his little Prince of Darkness smashed on the top rope. The Rock thinks this is a great opportunity to grab a water bottle and spit in the champ's face. And from here we go back to the outside and into the audience. The two eventually come back to the ringside area and The Rock remains in control. However, The Undertaker blocks a chair shot with the ring bell and it looks like Rock's out cold. When he does get back up, Paul Bear smacks him with his stinky shoe, but somehow The Rock overcomes the stench and he's still in this championship match. Rock throws a few right hands but he gets planted with the DDT, he gets up for some chin abuse and he runs straight into the Undertaker's big boot. Undertaker goes back to the chin lock but Rock isn't going to let this violence continue so he puts Taker down with a Samoan drop. We come to a stalemate when both guys get wiped out after a double clothesline. Paul Bear tries to will his Undertaker back into the match while a fan in the audience lets us know they're eating hobbits. Fantastic. And here we go, more right hands from The Rock only this time he puts Taker on his ass. Taker fights back, he goes for a tombstone, Rock counters with a DDT but the champ kicks out of the follow up cover. The two get up, the referee takes a bump that looked super intentional, and with the referee laid out, The Rock's able to hit the people's elbow. The follow up pin doesn't get counted, so Taker hits a low blow and Paul Bear drenches his little spunk rag with some ether. We can tell it's ether because it has the word ether plastered on the front, plus we get the usual commentary discussion about how it suddenly stinks around the ringside area. This time the plan backfires though and Rock's able to take the rag and shove it in Undertaker's face. But just as the champ begins the fade out, Triple H runs down and the Great One takes a pedigree. Jim Ross calls Triple H a no good son of a bitch right here. Taker covers Rock, Rock kicks out, so the dead man ends it with a tombstone pile driver and that means the Undertaker is still WWF champion. Bit of a slog to get through this one if I'm honest. So much nonsense going on and sometimes you just want to see a plain old no nonsense one on one match you know. It's par for the course during this era, I know, but that's 6 matches so far that either had an unconventional finish or just plain old interference. I complained about this at the Great American Bash, so it's only fair that the WWF gets the same treatment. Shawn Michaels has kicked Triple H out of the arena and Vince says Hunter was supposed to be his replacement tag team partner tonight. With a mouthful of chewing tobacco, HBK says no shit Sherlock. So Vince puts in a phone call to get himself a replacement for his replacement. He tells whoever this is to come back to the arena and we all know who left the arena earlier on after attacking Kenny Boy Shamrock. This is gonna be good. By the way, the cameraman caught The Rock standing around watching the promo, just thought I'd point that out. X-Pac comes to the ring for the King of the Ring final and he's not looking so good. Billy Gunn reveals that he's going right after Kid's scrawny little neck in this match and when the match is over, Waltman's going to kiss Billy's royal ass. Billy gets in the ring and he gets in a cheap shot right at the opening bell. Billy pulls off a stinger splash but his second attempt fails. Pac then sends Billy out of the ring and there's a plancha right there from the Kid. X-Pac keeps the pressure on back inside the ring with a diving clothesline but Billy refocuses on the injured neck with a bulldog. When Kid kicks out he falls victim to a military press slam and Gunn tries to wear X-Pac out with a chancery. Pac gets up, he takes a power slam, Billy argues with the referee when Kid kicks out at 2 and this leads to Pac performing the X-Factor but he takes way too long when making the cover. Unfazed by this, X-Pac delivers the Bronco Buster but that means we've seen Kid's two signature moves and he still hasn't put Billy away. Billy delivers a neckbreaker, he goes to the top rope to try an aerial attack but Pac stops this from happening. Kid gets fired up as he goes upstairs himself but Billy knocks him down and our match ends with a great looking diving famouser. Billy Gunn is the 1999 King of the Ring tournament winner and yeah, not great was it? Billy's push began before King of the Ring and you guys who watch Relive in the War would know he's been getting featured quite a lot on Raw every week. I still think seeing a Queen of the Ring getting crowned would have been way more interesting but badass winning the tournament was probably the right call. The King of the Ring didn't do much for Ken Shamrock last year though, so let's see if it helps push Billy to the next level this year. At least the match ended with no nonsense or any kind of interference. When Vince McMahon revealed himself as the greater power, both Stephanie and Linda McMahon handed their company shares over to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin decided to cause havoc in WWF headquarters over in Stamford, from having a beer bash in the boardroom to making Vince's office even more filthy than what it already was, and Vince was deeply embarrassed and greatly humiliated by Austin's actions. 
Vince challenged Stone Cold to a ladder match at King of the Ring. Vince and Shane vs the CEO of WWF. Full ownership of the company is up for grabs. Stone Cold accepted the challenge and if any corporation members interfere then the McMahons are going to get disqualified and ownership of the company will go over to the rattlesnake. Vince comes out first and he announces his tag team partner for this match. Guys, this is it. Steve Blackman's headline in this pay-per-view and he's going to become a WWF owner if he gets his hands on that briefcase. If Blackman wins this match, he can just buy WCW and end country music forever. We cut to a live GTV feed where Shane and the Main Street Posse are having a good old laugh. Shane is not injured, he's absolutely fine. This was a plan all along so he could worm his way out of this match and have a real motherfucking professional take his place. Pete Gas notices that Shane's currently live on the air and Shane panics. He tries to leave the arena but HBK is waiting at the door and he orders Shane to get down to the ring right now. Steve Blackman will not be main event in this pay per view so good job WWF you've completely broke my heart with this one and I'll never ever forgive you. HBK says the boy wonders more than capable of competing tonight and Steve should get his GI Joe looking ass out of here. Steve missed his flight, he can't go to Nitro now so all this is gonna do is piss the lethal weapon off even more. Stone Cold makes his way down to the ring and the pop he gets is insane as always. The McMahons decide to grab the chair right away but Stone Cold strikes and the fight's on. Shane gets neutralised and this allows Stone Cold to punish Vince inside the ring. A clothesline almost takes Vince's head off and when Shane comes back he ends up taking a few right hands followed by the Luthez press. Austin continues his attack outside the ring, dropping an elbow on Vince McMahon and smashing the boy wonder's balls into the ring post. But the McMahons then start using their brains for once and Shane's able to hit Stone Cold with a clothesline. Vince retrieves the ladder as Shane gets thrown into the ring steps. Austin then meets McMahon at the entrance set and Vince gets pushed to the floor while still holding the ladder. Austin throws Vince into a fence set up beside the curtain and after Shane attacks Steve he decides to retreat up a ladder where he's going to use the other ladders as a makeshift platform. This doesn't last long though as Stone Cold's quick to knock Shane back down. Things then get a bit crazy when Austin throws Vince into one of the ladders that's being used to hold up the others. He does this again and again to both Vince and Shane and it's almost like they're playing human Jenga, you're just waiting for it to all crash down. All but one ladder holds up the entire set and Austin decides to pull it down and the crowd goes nuts. It was a great looking spot where the McMahons were also kept safe so credit to whoever set this thing up. Our match resumes back in the ring where Vince gets whacked with a ladder and Shane gets sent over the announce table. Austin then gets a bright idea when he sees Shane suffering beside JR and King and the rattlesnake decides to jump off the ladder while dropping an elbow on the boy wonder. For some reason Vince tries to climb the ladder on the outside and Stone Cold's quick to greet him with a right hand. However, Vince pushes the ladder while Stone Cold's still up there and the rattlesnake falls on the English announce table. Evidently it's a bit harder to make that one break. Vince goes for the briefcase, he gets a hand on it, Stone Cold then hits Vince with a low blow and McMahon finds himself in a, a weird spot on top of the ladder. McMahon gets slammed off the ladder and Austin stumps a mud hole in Shane. He then sets the ladder up in the corner and both McMahons take a bump ride here that didn't look pretty at all. Shane then gets catapulted face first into the ladder and Stone Cold drops the ladder on McMahon Jr as the crowd goes nuts. Austin stands on top of the ladder which sits on top of Shane. The boy wonder taps out but that's not going to help him in this match. Stone Cold then goes for the briefcase but Vince wakes up and Austin crashes to the mat. For some reason the McMahons decide to not use the ladder and instead Vince tries to give Shane a boost. This doesn't work so instead Shane sits on his daddy's shoulders and still he can't reach the belt. Stone Cold wakes up, he flips Shane off, a right hand knocks Vince to the mat and Austin thinks it's time to end it. Vince takes a stone cold stunner, Shane takes a stone cold stunner, Austin sets up the ladder and he goes to grab the briefcase but someone's screwing around and the briefcase begins rising up towards the ceiling. Austin can't reach the briefcase so he leaves the ring to question the timekeeper and ring announcer but no one has any answers. 
Meanwhile, the briefcase gets lowered again. Vince tries to grab it, but Stone Cold meets him on the ladder for the last time, and Austin tries to knock Vince down. Shane decides to sacrifice his dad, and he pushes the ladder. This gives McMahon Jr. the opportunity to set the ladder up once again, and he manages to retrieve the briefcase. Vince and Shane win the winner takes all ladder match, and that means Vince and Shane have control over the WWF. So the question is, who was controlling the briefcase? The main event was alright, it definitely keeps you watching simply because it's a multi-man ladder match and it has that unpredictability you usually expect when watching such matches, but the rest of this event wasn't great at all. It's weird because the tournament matches took up half of the pay per view but it still somehow felt really rushed and not in a time flies by when you're having fun type of way either, though I guess the China match was alright. Rock vs Undertaker just wasn't good and I don't think their styles mix all that well in the ring. The one and only tag team match on the show also felt really rushed. Just a bad pay per view all around really with the main event being watchable just because it's a ladder match. King of the Ring 99 does not come recommended unfortunately, last years event was much better. But after what happened at this show, Raw should be interesting tomorrow night. We'll see if Billy Gunn gets featured more prominently and we'll see how the McMahons plan on punishing Steve Austin now that they are the full owners of WWF. I'll see you all next week for Reliving the War, thank you so much for watching guys and please take care.